People are understandably excited and curious about the upcoming Fractal FM3, and while it hasn't been released yet, I thought it might be cool to do like a virtual FM3 using my Axe FX3 and FC6 controller. One thing that keeps coming up on my channel, I probably get a question a day when it's like, when's the FM3 coming out? Uh, if you want to know more about that, go to the forum because that's being discussed at the moment and Fractal gave a little update about that. That is way out of the scope of this video to talk about. But what is well within the scope is to address that. How do you only use three foot switches? What were they thinking? So if you haven't seen my videos on the FC controllers where I discuss layouts, go and check out how layouts work because even though the FC6 that I've got here has six buttons, there are eight layouts, which means you can do a whole lot more than just assign six different effects or functions. So the layouts feature is super handy. What I'm gonna do with this preset is try to use as few blocks as possible and as few layouts as possible. So I'm gonna do one shifty little thing I'll show you guys about in a second. Another thing as well, take all this with a grain of salt. The FM3 obviously has not been released yet. Uh, so commenting about what it can and can't do is a little bit of a moot point. Wait till it comes out to confirm any of this stuff. But you can definitely do this on the Axe FX3 and the FM3. C controllers so hold me to that not to the as yet unreleased FM3 anyway what I want to have is four different scenes here because I find during a typical gig for what I do four scenes is more than enough I want a straight up dirty rock rhythm guitar sound I want a boosted solo sound uh, I want some kind of like spacey rhythmic delay sound and I want a clean sound with a bit of reverb so one thing that is cool about the FM3 it's using these dual core DSPs so one core runs the amp block and a reverb block. That was a big complaint about the AX8. If you ran out of CPU, that the reverb would get disabled. So in this case with the FM3, you'll always be able to run an amp and a reverb. That's guaranteed, that always works. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so what I've done is obviously included an amp block. I'm using the USA 2C++ because I love the way this sounds. And a reverb at the moment, I'm using this Recording Studio C with just a touch of reverb. I use in-ears live and I find that a little bit of a room simulation really brings those to life. The cab that I'm using is this user cab that I made of my Marshall cab with V30s. This one is up on Axchange if you want to try it. And then there is the all-rounder block. This one just makes your life so easy if you know how to use this. This is the multi-delay block. It takes the place of a delay block a modulation block and it can even do kind of faux reverb style effects. I've talked about the multi-delay a lot, but it's going in this preset. The other thing that I've got is a wah. Now I talked about a shifty little trick. Uh, on my FC controller, I'm using one of the external control switches hooked up to a two button switch. So this is connected with a TRS jack. And what I'm using, if we have a look at the FC controller edit, so I'm using an FC6 and the top buttons are all blanked out. What you can do though on these uh, like virtual buttons, if you had an FC12, you would actually have these, but I can use a stand-in switch. So over here, like this switch is obviously not physically present on my FC6, but what I can do is say, hey, that external switch that I've got is gonna stand in for this function of a tuner. So I can access the tuner with an external switch that I could add on. And I'm also gonna have a layout increment feature which will scroll around. So this will let me go from layout one to layout two and back using that external switch. And I've also put the tuner onto this external switch. You could make one of these for not much money or you could go and buy a pedal uh, for also not much money, you know, like easily around the $50, $60 mark for something kind of high end for this kind of thing. So you could get your FM3 add on something like this, add an expression pedal, and you've got far more than three buttons would suggest. So that is the layout. What's happening here on layout one, these are my scenes. So when I press the bottom left button, it gives me scene one. When I hold that button, it gives me scene two. The middle button, when I press it, will give me scene three. And when I hold it, will give me scene four. And then over here, we've got tap tempo on the third button, the far right button, and uh, I have scene five as just a really neutral clean sound if I wanted, I would almost never use that. Uh, if we go over to not scene two, we want layout two on the FC controller. What I've got is the multi-delay and the hold function for the multi-delay is gonna scroll through the four channels of the multi-delay if I wanna play around with that. Then I have two control switches set up here, uh, control switch one and control switch two. They're assigned to functions in the amp block. I'll show you that in a second. And then I've got reverb 
for the last switch if I ever want to turn that off or I want to toggle between a small reverb and a really big reverb, one of the cloud-based reverbs. I've done a lot of talking so far. What I'm going to do is just go through the four scenes and show you guys how they work. So we'll start with scene one. <laughs> So just scrolling through there, what I did was I used this button to go from my scenes layout to my effects layout, uh, and then I can scroll through the various multi-delay functions or the reverb functions as you heard there. One thing about changing the delay channels is obviously, uh, and this would happen with nearly any digital or analog delay unit, when you change the delay times, you're gonna get some like funky sounds, and I kind of like that. So don't be too worried about those weird like garbled sounds in there. That's normal behavior with the multi-delay block. And you heard that on scene two, when I went to the lead sound, there was a bit of a boost in there. There was more gain and there was more level. So the way I'm doing a lot of the tricks with this is rather than use like filter blocks and drive blocks, I'm using control switches. In the amp block, I have a control switch set to the input boost. So that will turn on this T808 boost. Furthermore, I have a control switch on the fat switch so that when I go from, let me go back over to my layout number one. So we're on scene one, the boost and the fat switch are off. If I hold this button down and go to scene two, you can see not only do I get an input boost, the fat switch is turned on, which is awesome. Furthermore, this scene turns on my multi-delay block on this quad tap delay, which is set up so that delay one and two give me a chorus effect. We can assign chorus to each of the delay lines, as you can see there. And I've got quite a short delay time with no feedback. Delay three and four are a dotted eighth and a quarter note delay, which is pretty awesome. On top of all of that, I've got another control switch attached to the level of the cab block. This is control switch two that is giving me 3 dB of boost. You can have up to six control switches, which is pretty awesome. And basically have them turn things on and off, turn things up or down. So if you have a look, for example, at the cab block, when I go from scene one to scene two, you can see that the little level control is being turned up there. Uh, furthermore, in the amp block, let's just have a listen to the difference uh, between the amp block if I go from, say, in this case, my straight up sound, which is just this USA C++, bass really low, treble cranked, and this kind of V shape with the EQ. And then we'll go over to scene two again, and you'll hear the multi-delay come on, the chorus gives you this widening effect. We've got all the lushness, what I call the cheat codes from the delay. The fat switch is on, there's more gain and there's more level. So it absolutely just blows your face off. <laughs> And you can obviously tailor the amount of boost that you want going on there depending on your context. Uh, scene three, I use a lot when I'm doing uh, gigs with Ragdoll because I'm playing in a three piece and I find that rhythmic delay really makes parts pop out and kind of give me a bit of space. <laughs> Thank you. 
The way I'm achieving that is in the multi-delay block, we've changed channels. I've got this quad parallel delay set as an eighth note and a dotted quarter note in there, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's also a quarter note and a dotted eighth over here. Oh, okay, right, sorry, I'm getting, I'm even confusing myself here. Uh, delays one and two are on, but delays three and four are off, as you can see from the level control. So that's just your standard quarter note dotted eighth delay there. When I go over to scene four, I'm changing the amp to the USA clean. The cabinet is staying the same. Uh, it's also not boosted in this preset, but the multi-delay is going over to this quad parallel delay, which isn't acting as a delay anymore. What I've got are very short delay line times, and I have added chorus on all of these. As you can see, a fast rate over here with quite a bit of depth. And that gives me like a faux univibe kind of sound. If I turn the reverb off, you get this. And then I'm using one of these uh, newer cloud reverb types, this Stratocumulus with 10 seconds of reverb. This is just a really super lush sound there on scene four. I mentioned earlier scene five is just a neutral kind of clean sound. So USA clean with just that room reverb sounds like this. which is nice if I ever don't want to go crazy uh, with effects and gain, which is very rare. So that is the way I've set all of this up. And layout number one lets me tap or hold foot switches to get scenes. Layout number two is a little bit different in that I can turn on and off those control switches. I can turn the multi-delay and the reverb on and off. And I can also cycle through the channels by holding down. The big kind of cheat on all of this is using those external switches. One which lets me cycle through the layout. So if I press one button, it will take me from layout one to layout two. You could have it cycle through all eight layouts if that's what you wanted to do. And furthermore, I've got my tuner assigned to the other button. So I've kind of offloaded the tuner function from there to an external switch. And, you know, honestly, like I said, you can make a switch like this for a couple of bucks. So you can go out and buy one and it's a really small addition to the FM3. I think considering that the FM3 lists at like 9.99 US to go and spend like 20 to 50 bucks on it, especially if you're probably gonna spend like, you know, between 100 and $200 on an expression pedal uh, to control your wah, which I realize I haven't shown you guys. I'll, I'll show you that right at the end. Uh, then it's a pretty small investment in order to access even more functionality. It just would make this virtual FM3 a whole lot more functional. Oh, I better shut up. If you guys have any more questions about this or any hypotheticals uh, about the upcoming FM3, please let me know in the comments. I'd, uh, I've played the FM3 at Axfest when it was still in the earliest stages of development. Uh, I actually had the chance to compare it side by side with an XFX3 once everybody else had gone home and through the same rig, I could not tell the difference uh, between which unit I was playing. So the modeling sounds fantastic. Uh, you're gonna have all the effects in there. Even if you didn't wanna use the amp modeling, it would be a killer effects only processor. And you can have a lot more effects in a preset than I'm using here. I just wanted to give you like a bare bones Spartan approach to preset layout that I would probably use because Sometimes, you know, the fewer things you have, the more expressive you can be. There's that old saying when it refers to uh, art. I'm certainly not making art. I'm just having fun playing guitar, but sometimes having less options leads to more creativity. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope it uh, answered some questions. It probably raised some questions as well. You can go and watch all my videos on the Axe FX3 and the FC controllers. So hopefully fill in some of the gaps, leave questions in the comments and uh, I'll round this out by playing some wah and just absolutely indulging myself with this multi-delay. Thanks for watching. <laughs>